Peace for Ukraine or Ukraine. We can acquire greater knowledge, what we call supra wisdom. What we call wisdom is not a human so-called intelligence, but a cosmos wisdom. Uh, this is something not very mysterious and not very difficult to acquire. I was so surprised after I acquired it. I was so surprised that it is so easy. It's kind of what the Americans say: know how only, know how. It's the same like every science. Every work, every specialty, it's like learning how to build a bridge or learning how to make an airplane. A uh, hundred years ago, it would have been impossible to think that one could fly from America to Taiwan just ten or so hours or twenty hours. Then you are right. A hundred or so years ago, it would have been impossible to even imagine. Is that not so? Yes. And now with the Development of science, everybody takes it for granted. It's no problem. Today, to sit on an airplane is like to sit in a taxi. It's just a little bit longer distance. That's all. Now we may enter in a different era, and even a higher, higher scientific civilization. We can transcend the space limit and even the dimensions limit. The world dimension. Up to now, we learn to know only, I think, the third dimension. Is that not so? If I say something wrong, please correct me. I'm still very young; I make mistakes. <laughs> But there are some ways to know the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the tenth dimensions, etc. If we only know how, this kind of、uh, transcendental. Uh, way we can acquire through our own effort by the help of someone who has already known the way, and that is very easy to understand. No, it's just like you want to become a doctor, then you go and find a doctor, and find a medical school, and learn with those who are specialized in the field, and then after some time, some years, you become a doctor. Simple as that. And now these are the science of the world, what we call earthly sciences, like to make aircraft, to make spaceships, to make auto cars. Auto is it English? Yes. Yeah, because some English, French, and German words are similar. So I'm wondering what I'm speaking. <laughs> <laughs> See. I have friends of, of all nations, and sometimes I would mix up language. The best thing is that we learn the Kuan Yin method, the enlightening method, and then we don't need all this complication. <laughs> we can communicate from within, and from America, you know what the people in Taiwan need, and you know how to help them, and that's why many people are interested in becoming enlightened. Inside of us, we have great wisdom. Great power, and this is what we call Christ power, or God power, or Buddha nature. It's the same thing, just different countries name it differently. I'm glad that you have no discrimination in your mind, and that you have come to listen to me. It means your heart is very broad, yeah, and it's easy to communicate. If someone just clings to one religion or another, it makes it difficult for me to <laughs> communicate. Those who come here, it means somehow that you are very open-minded. Yeah. So I feel very relaxed, and feel very close to you somehow. Very close. I don't know how you feel. Is it close or not close? Huh? <laughs> Is it anything very close? Yes. yes. Oh, I'm so happy. This is good. That means we have something in the heart, <laughs> some affinity. Yeah. So then we go further. What makes Jesus so great? What makes Buddha so famous? 
What makes Lao Tzu, Zhuang Tzu, Kong Tzu so famous up till now? It is the power that they have acquired. We all have this power, I may inform you. My information doesn't give you this power. My information doesn't make you great. It is you who are already great. It is as you do not know. It's you forgot to use it. So I have the honor to inform you. Maybe you remember it or maybe not. But it is my duty to inform you. Because since I have found it, I cannot long for anything else in this world. I am free from any desire. So I think some of you out there in the world would long to have the same kind of joy, the same kind of complete fulfillment of satisfaction that we have no longer, this kind of struggle. I don't know what is missing. We want to find something. I don't know what it is. We have husbands, we have wives, we have wealth, we have money, we have positions, we have everything that society can offer, but we still feel lonely. We feel something is not right. And that is because we have not found our home. We have not found this Christ power within us. We have not found heaven within our heart, or we have not found our own Buddha nature. That is what's missing. So I have found it, and I thought, I must inform you that there is a way that is very easy and beautiful and costs nothing, costs no complication, no changing of any society, any environment, no shaving of the head. You don't have a look at my head. You don't need to do it. <laughs> you don't need to do it. <laughs> you still can find the same power. But I already shaved, so I continue to shave. <laughs> <laughs> Just to show you that we don't need to change anything. Whatever we are, we stay like that. Uh, maybe tomorrow I will feel like and I might grow my hair. That makes no difference to me or you <laughs> or the Buddha nature inside. Jesus found this power. Therefore, he was so great. He could heal the sick. He could open the wisdom eye. He could take people back to his father. Therefore, he was great. Buddha found his power. That's why he was a Buddha, a world-honored one, the most honorable among human beings and gods. I don't mean the greatest god, the Almighty. I mean the small gods, the divas. They are great gods and small gods. So he was greatest among gods and men because he had found his power. Confucius and Lao Tzu, they all found his power and many, many countless more beings have found this power, and they became great. Whether they are famous or not famous, it makes no difference. They found it, and that's it. And that makes them happy. That makes them joyous and mighty. We are human. Every religion would tell us humans are the best, the best kind of beings that we can get. Even the angels have to bow to human beings. God says so. When God made human beings, He has told the angels they had to bow to us. And then one or two did not bow. So God punished them and sent them to hell. That was Satan, the one with the two horns and, <laughs> and ugly looking. <laughs> I have never met him, so actually <laughs> my description is... Uh, <laughs> is <laughs> it's not uh, very dependable. I can only tell you about God. How beautiful he is. And the Buddhas, and the angels, and the fairies, <laughs> and all the beautiful beings in the cosmos. Cosmos? Yeah? Yeah. If I tell you something wrong, please correct me immediately. Let me have a chance to learn English like this. I can tell you from the beautiful side. Yeah, the ugly side I've left behind so long ago, I might have forgotten what it looks like. Yeah. But if you like, maybe you can go to hell and have a look. <laughs> Actually, when we practice this path of truth, we can't even go to hell, but as a visitor. Yeah, and we can go when we want to, but not as a prisoner, not as a, the one who goes and has to suffer, but the one who goes and blesses. 
We go to hell and our hell immediately becomes empty. We have to go sometimes to rescue our relatives, our disciples, our friends, our husbands and wives who had been astray before we got initiation. So we must go sometimes, but we are free to come and free to go. The Master will take us there and take us home. No, we don't talk about hell. It will scare everybody to death. <laughs> We don't often go there, sometimes only. Actually, after initiation, most of our relatives are being rescued immediately. Most immediately go to different sphere to live in happiness. But in case some of them are so heavy, they obstructed with their own dark thinking from before, yeah? or from the many lives before. They may have to stay there a little bit longer and we may have to go down ourselves and take them home. Uh, I think you have reached some of Swedenborg or something like that. Ah, uh, have you? Swedenborg? Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Have you read that he went to hell and rescued some people? Yeah. Go home and have a look. I haven't even read myself. I haven't. <laughs> I don't know where I learned this information from. I haven't read him, okay, but you may read, it's very interesting. Now, he is not the only one. Buddha also went there, Buddha's disciples went there, Jesus went there, Jesus' disciples sometimes went there, and uh, our disciples also go there. And they go back, they can also tell you something horrible <laughs> that makes you feel uh, as a nightmare. But we don't go there often if we don't have any mission. If we have nothing to do there, we don't go. We have to only go upward to higher and glorious worlds, to be near to our Almighty God. The ocean of love and mercy, this is what we call God. Yes, he is not a being, although he might manifest himself sometimes as a kind of a being to let us feel close to Him, touch Him, and communicate with Him. But otherwise, there is only an ocean of love and mercy and of bliss, blessing and compassion. Everything that's good and joyous, that is God. <laughs>